Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. We love him. How can you hate him? Larry Bubbles Brown. Larry. Yes, the last man to get COVID. (laughs) You know, I'm the last guy to get COVID. Come on. Is this a competition? Yeah, I think now I know how. Like, there must have been like the last guy who got shot in World War II you know, as, as they were signing the treaty. Bang, bang. Yeah, there were people like that. That happened, did happen. You know. Well, remember the uh, there were guys in the Jap those islands out there, those Japanese soldiers that were like hiding twenty years after the war was over because they thought it was still on. Yeah, and there had been an airport built in Guam, so the, the one of the soldiers, he just thought that it was enemy planes that were landing. That's why he's hiding in a cave for 20 years. <laughs> oh, boy. Imagine when you find that out. You suddenly realize <laughs> what an amazing waste of time. Yeah. You know? It was all a waste of time. Just horrible. Just horrible. Yeah, um, I kind of feel that way about doing a podcast so you know <laughs> wait i saw what did i read that i think every day worldwide there's like nine thousand podcasts start yeah there's something like thirty thousand of them yeah and within a week most of them quit oh really yeah oh okay all right you know well, at least less competition, I guess. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Well, everybody decides, oh, I'll do a podcast. Because you, it's very easy to do a podcast. The only person in America who can't do a podcast is you because you don't have the uh, hookup. Right. You're still using dial-up. Are you still using dial-up? I'm getting the high speed very soon. What, what's very soon? Within um, this month sometime. Because, you know, when you get the high speed, we can then put you on Zoom, and then we can see your ugly mug. Well, that would require a computer with a uh, camera. <laughs> well, oh, you don't have a camera? I'll send Not you. Not on mine, no. I'll, I'll send you one, okay? <laughs> I have extras around here. All right? And then we can see your ugly face. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be terrific. No, well, well, there are a couple other projects I'm working on, like uh, maybe Lori Thompson and I are just going to do a show, and so we'd want to bring you on to it, but we'd like to have a visual on you. you oh, know? yeah, you mentioned that'd be, uh, you two getting back together would be great. Yeah, but that we would then have bring people like you in, and uh, uh, who was the traffic woman? Uh, <clears throat> what was Lisa it? Carr. Lisa Carr. How can I forget that? Lisa Carr. Got to, can't be her real name. <laughs> can't be, no. She was doing traffic, and her name was Lisa Carr. Okay. Uh, I think and, she's still doing traffic out here. I occasionally hear her on KCBS. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a lifetime job. Traffic will never stop being miserable, so, you know. No. But whatever. Well, you worked for that company, right? That's who paid you. I was paid. It was called Metro. I think they covered most of the stations here. Yeah. Yeah, and and so you were hired by you were Metro paid by traffic. you were paid by them to do the traffic. Do they do they ever come to you and say your traffic is not good? Are you there? What happened to Bubbles? We lost Bubbles. Okay, let me put this on pause, and we'll see if we can get Bubbles again. Let me see here. How do I how do I go forward on this? Huh. Oh, oh, I guess we're still going. Oh, okay. Hey folks, I I I thought I stopped this and I didn't. I paused it and I didn't. So uh so we have bubbles and and, and we'll uh, he's back again. What happened to you? We were talking about metro traffic and then it just went blank. Just went blank. Oh well. I mean, we use Skype for this, and they're not all that terrific. But anyway, 
Um, so uh, I, thank you, folks, for waiting through that while I tried to get him back. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but that's all part of doing podcasting. You know, uh, and I'll keep doing it so I won't be one of those people that quits. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to be a quitter. Mm. But oh man, there are so many podcasts out there. So anyway, but getting back to the traffic. So you were paid by Metro Traffic. Metro Traffic, yeah. Yeah. Did they ever complain to you about the way you did traffic? They didn't complain, but they had, they did have a meltdown when I made fun of Kaiser and uh, they yeah, pulled yeah. the spots. Uh, pull a case, got this memo said pull all Kaiser spots immediately. <laughs> and and tell them what you said. Tell them what you said. Uh, Kaiser had an ad that said uh, we're different from the ground up, and I tagged it with because that's where all our patients are. <laughs> well, I thought you also said Kaiser, which is uh, doctor assisted suicide. Doctor assisted suicide. Yeah, yes. but it was the ground up one that got them pissed off. Oh, you know? not the uh, doctor assisted no, that, suicide. No, that it didn't bother <laughs> that one. Because <laughs> I always quote that line because I think it's a terrific line. <laughs> Yeah. I had, uh, God, before comedy, I had when I had a day job, I remember I could go to Kaiser for a dollar. Do you remember this? It, that's what you did. You went for a dollar. I remember I was my parents belonged to it because in the beginning, you know, it was just for union members. And my yeah. father was a member of the Musicians Union, and so he signed up for Kaiser. And so whenever I got sick, my mother took me to Kaiser, and uh, she pulled out a dollar bill and handed it to them, <laughs> and uh, they did everything they were supposed to do for me. It was actually not a bad system then. Yeah, well, now, it, you see, back then it was socialized medicine. It was set up by Henry J. Kaiser, who was an uh, automobile magnet at the time, uh, and he wanted to give a medical program for his employees, and he had a rather vast a network of employees uh, and so he set that up for his employees and they said well why don't I do this also for people who belong to unions and then he opened it up to people who were in something else and then something else and then finally I think almost anybody could join but basically in the beginning it was like union members and since my father was in a union he got to be part of Kaiser and my father thought it was the best idea in the world and at the time it was it was, yeah. You know, it was superior. I mean, it was it was socialized medicine. That's what they called it. Well, as time went on, Kaiser just became another, you know, what do they call them? Those, those uh, HMO. HMOs, yeah. Another homo. And then it became, it also became uh, well, nothing cheap about Kaiser anymore. They got the... Uh, they don't have socialists running that. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's really it's it's just another HMO. Yeah, uh, but in those days, you paid a buck. My mother pay, would pay a buck, and I would go into the doctor, and they consider that the best deal you could have. And I think I I think as a union member, I'm remember trying to remember how much maybe they paid a month or a year. Maybe it was nothing. I think it was just a few cents of every couple of weeks about a paycheck and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you could get an operation for a dollar. Oh yeah, and they had the best doctors too. They had great doctors, uh, but it was it wasn't also it wasn't meant to be profitable. I think now it is meant now to be it's profitable. profitable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you yeah. got CEOs making millions of dollars there. Well, you know where we really went bad, and I think this was under was this under I think it was under Reagan. Uh, it used to be that medical insurance companies had to be not for profit. In other words, they were nonprofit corporations, nonprofit organizations. And uh, when they suddenly made it for profit, all of a sudden look at how the prices went up on uh, on health insurance. I mean, do you have health insurance? I'm on Medicare. Oh, you're on Medicare. Yeah, what do you do about the other 20%? I haven't I don't I'm in the Medicare Advantage with Kaiser, so that's, yeah. you can't buy insur extra insurance on those. Yeah, well, it, um, Advantage is not Medicare. It's through usually a medical uh, company, a, a, what do you call it, a insurance company. Uh, and it is different than I have supplemental, and I pay about three, 100 and 
$20 a month or something for the supplemental. But supplemental, I go to a doctor and there's no bill when I'm through. There's no bill. There's nothing they charge for. It's picked up completely the other 20% by the insurance company. As it should be. Yeah. With you, the um, advantage, I wouldn't, to most people I would not suggest advantage, but financially it's a better idea. Okay. It's not as expensive. How much do you pay for your advantage? Uh, 70 a month. Yeah. So, you know, but uh, I, I pay, what is it? Is it 320 a month or something like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the amount. And it, but I but it takes care of everything. I mean, you know, I could go in there and suddenly, uh, well, like I did with the prostate thing, I had a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, money on that. You know, that was very expensive. It came to between all of it over a hundred thousand dollars. Jesus, really? You know, most of it was taken care of by Medicare. Yeah. So well, the healthcare but, system so broken here. It's just. Well, you, you know, know how it, just the Medicare stuff, just reading that, you have to be a lawyer. It's just so complicated and stupid. Well, the thing that really is stupid is, for instance, let me, let's say, okay, you're going to, when are you going to need Medicare and when are you going to need medical insurance the most? When okay. you're old. When I was younger, I didn't even think about it. In fact, right. a lot of times most of the, the uh, companies, excuse me, the companies I've worked for, uh, uh, had insurance. So I just never thought about it. I just had an insurance policy, you know. But as you get older, uh, they start charging you a lot of money for supplemental insurance and advantage and blah, 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 blah. And it should all be free. And here's the reason why. When you're 70, 80 years old, do you have the income you had when you were in your 40s? No. So it's ridiculous that as you get older and you absolutely need insurance, it's almost an imperative, that the prices should be so high. I mean, between Marjorie and I, we for the supplemental, we pay $620 a month, I think. We don't pay it, her company does for the time being, but eventually we're going to have to pay for it. So it's, it's like, it's ridiculous, just ridiculous. As you get older, you sh the government should take over more of your medical expenses, yeah. and you should get the best medical care possible. You shouldn't have to go to oh somebody that Medicare says you have to go to. It should be anybody that ha is a doctor, and they get paid. Now, some doctors won't take Medicare because they don't get a lot of money from Medicare. Other doctors are happy to take Medicare because they have a kind of practice that is probably geriatric patients are probably their prime customers. So they have to have Medicare. So it's it's weird. It's just terrible. It's horrible. Nobody should be ruined financially by a medical problem. No. And, they, and that, do you know that is the um, number one reason for personal bankruptcies? I think it is, In yeah. the United States? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, folks. You go out and you get sick. Now, I, I it's amazing. When you're young, you just don't get it, right? Did you have health insurance when you were younger? I'll tell you. I had, uh, when I quit the day job, this is 1984, uh, I had Kaiser for, and it was $24 a month. Okay. So cut to uh, cut to 20, 30, 25 years later, my Kaiser was eight hundred and five dollars a month. Really? Medicare. Really? Yeah. So it was like my my health insurance was about twice what I was paying for rent until I got yeah, on the but Medicare. But it wasn't like the cost of living had gone up that much. No, no, not at all. But it just it just kept creeping up and up and up. It just didn't stop. Yeah. And now at your age, you you need it, right? You have a lot yeah. of little... Everything's falling apart. Everything's falling apart. How's your toothache? Uh, well, I got a temporary crown. Mm-hmm. And they look at that later this month, and then he said, then we'll find out if you need a root canal or not. I don't know why he couldn't tell me when they did the temporary crown, but he said we'll find out when they look at Put it a so. temporary crown on a tooth that might need that doesn't make sense oh well 
Yeah, it didn't make sense to me either. None of it makes sense. I don't trust doctors. I don't trust dentists. I don't trust any of them anymore. You know, I've gotten so much just BS from doctors and from, you know, and, and I, I look at a, a dentist as a person who looks in my mouth and sees a yacht. <laughs> Have you ever had a root canal? Oh, I've had, oh God, I, my mouth is nothing but root canals. So someone told me they're not painful, but they are expensive. They, they, they didn't used to be that expensive. Um, but root canals are... Uh, um, Three grand? Uh, God. Well, you see, what happens is it, it piles one thing on top of another. you you got to have the root canal. Okay, maybe the root canal is, let's say it's... Let's say it's two grand. I, I don't think it's that. I think something like about eighteen hundred, something like that. But then you need a crown to put on there, and the crown is another fifteen hundred. Oh, crap! See, yeah. so that's the kind of thing we're talking about, you know. And then on top of it, unless they're like my, we do have some dental insurance. It's ridiculous, but we have some. But if, if, if most people don't have dental insurance because it's too expensive to buy. So consequently, you know, you're stuck for that. You know, yeah, now shouldn't the government, know. shouldn't that come under Medicare? It should be. It's part of your health. I don't know why it's not covered under all health insurance. You get a bad toothache and you don't do anything about it and it gets infected and then it goes into your system and you get septic poisoning or whatever. You know, come You're on, dead. come on. It should be taken care of by Medicare. It should be taken care of by medical. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, I didn't think much about it when I was making a ton of money in San Francisco. I had a dentist who I saw him every two weeks for one thing or another. He was always doing root canals and this and that. But you know what's <laughs> happening in my root canals now? They're starting to go bad. Um, oh, they don't last forever? Well, I had one tooth getting loose now. I had a couple get loose because the, the um, um, what do you call it? the root canal uh, suddenly got a fracture in it. And that can Jesus. happen. It's not from bad dentistry or anything else. And so when that happens, they have to pull the tooth, and then they have to put in a, a, a um, uh, what do you call it, an implant. Uh, and uh, that they're nice. I love my implants. They're terrific. It works. Oh, terrific. But they're like for forty five hundred five thousand dollars a a go, and Jesus. most insurance doesn't cover it. So just to look nice, you know, like this other one is in a place where it probably will not. I when I talk, it probably won't show that much, but it will until they fill it in. I'm gonna have to have. I'm gonna have to have a a, a, a what do you call it in there? An implant, you know. But implants are not, Jesus. Oh, implants are fine. You know, they're great. Once they get them done, they put them in there. Eh, it just feels like another tooth. It's really, uh, it's the new form of false teeth is what it really is. You know, in the old days, if you were missing a tooth between two other teeth, they'd put in like a bridge. And uh, you'd have a fake tooth that way. But now this is in there. It's solid. And uh, uh, supposedly they, they stay the way they're supposed to. But... The cost of them is extraordinary, just extraordinary. So, you know, I don't trust dentists because they're looking at my, at my mouth as an annuity. Um, and then they try to get you to go in and have your teeth cleaned every three months when no insurance company will pay for every three months. They'll only pay for every six months. So, you know, so but they want you to come in every three months to get your teeth cleaned. Well, the hell with that. I'd go once a year. Screw you, you know? And the other thing they now push is the deep uh, cleaning of the gum. Oh, well, that's... Like $1,000. Oh, yeah, that's the deep root cleaning, it's called. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that. They get down there, and they dig in there, and they get the stuff, and they clean the roots, and, oh, you're just in wonderful shape. But then all of a sudden, you have a toothache one day, and it's another tooth that's gone bad. So, you know, but um, the other thing is with doctors, with, with medicine today, the biggest problem are doctors because they're practicing what I call, um, what, what is it, the defensive, chemi <laughs> defensive uh, medicine. Uh, in other words, they don't want to get sued, 
So they're sending you in, out for a bunch of tests you really don't need. Don't need, yeah. So if something does go wrong, I'm a per, per chance, small per chance if something goes wrong, you won't turn around and sue them for it. Uh, it's defensive medicine, I call it. And and it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I mean, my doctor wants me to go out and have my lung CT scanned because one other CT scan found a couple of spots there which are nothing because one of them's been there in the same way since uh, 2016 and that long being the same size in the same place and whatever has to be considered benign all right so that one isn't a problem and then the other new one which is two centimeters is a kind of a nodule you get in your lung that's very common and it's almost never malignant okay even if it grows it's not malignant so i mean what are you sending me back to get another ct scan for i've been waiting a month i haven't done it yet what are you sending me back to get a ct scan for why because you're trying to protect your ass yeah you know i mean spots on lungs by the way very common um i was talking to michael snyder the other day he has a couple in his lungs yeah, and the doctor's doing the same thing. Uh, six months from now, we should t- we just check this again, you know. So I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous. I mean, I, I'm it's getting to the point where I just don't even trust doctors. No, you know. And remember, sixty percent of lung cancers are non-smokers. Sixty percent? That's what I read. <laughs> well, you know, we do have pollutants in the air. Pollution and uh, now all the fires. So. Yeah, and the fires and things like that. Yeah, can you know can be carcinogenic. But I didn't know that sixty percent of lung cancers are not from not on non smokers. And then apparently there were a ton of people from nine eleven in New York City that uh, got lung cancers from all that crap that was in the air. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. But you know, it's it's many years later, of course. You know, yeah. it happens. But I mean. Well, my lungs, you know, basically I just got those two little nodules and that's it. There's, and they're, they're nothing. There's nothing to worry about. Yeah, leave them alone. Yeah. You know, but and then I had this other thing where I, uh, uh, my neurologist did a blood test on me. And um, they told me he was doing it for a certain reason. And then he did a second blood test, had them s- check a second thing. And that went up, came up abnormal. All right. And... Um, it could be indicative of a lot of things, but he said you got to go. You've got to go to a oncologist, um, um, hematologist, okay, to get him to look at this, these numbers and see what he thinks. So I go, and they have told this story a dozen times on the air. They stabbed me about ten times trying to get blood out of me. They finally do. The name of the place, by the way, is called the Cancer and Blood Specialists. Now, if you're a specialist with blood, shouldn't you be able to find a vein? <laughs> you know, isn't that basic? I mean, hey, we're, I'm studying to be a hematologist. Okay, hematology 1A. Today we're going to teach you how to draw blood, you know. Uh, and uh, that, so that was painful. Then I go see the doctor, and he gives me a full checkup, checks my nodes and my neck. He finds a little swollen node in my groin. Um they do some blood tests on me. They find out my platelets are low, but uh, uh, I'm not uh, anemic. Okay, very good. Then he he uh, tells me, well, I'm going to process all these tests, and I'll get back to you. And I, I said, by the way, that thing my doctor sent me in for, uh, what about that? And he said, oh, yeah, I saw that. That's nothing. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's nothing. Then I look and see how much he charged Medicare for that 58 minute visit that's exactly what it says on medicare 58 minute visit five thousand dollars wow oh i just lost him there's something wrong with larry's uh, phone oh well we're coming close to the end of this thing so i probably should end it rather than try to get him back but let's just see if we can get him there we go off again yeah well we're running out of time uh, so okay. I'll, I'll tell you the rest of the story later. Uh, anyway, so he charged, me, but I uh, he only got about twelve hundred bucks from from Medicare. But nevertheless, with all of that, how do you think the test turned out? 
negative. Well, I can't tell you because I never found out. He never <laughs> called me with the results. Right? And when and about two, two, months, two months later, his nurse calls me and says, oh, the doctor would like to make an appointment for a follow-up. And I said, to what? She says, oh, to the uh, thing you did two months ago. And I said, well, I would love to, but I never got the results in the first place. She says, what? I said, no, the doctor never called me with the results of those tests. I never got a, a written thing of the results of those tests. She said, well, that's probably because there was nothing wrong with them. That's why the doctor doesn't call people back. I went, you call people back. You know, they just spend time in your office. They're yeah. agitated. They want, them, they want the doctor to be saying, there, there, dear boy, we looked at everything and there's nothing really wrong. So, so, the, so he wants a follow-up so he can charge Medicare again. Exactly. And I said, is it a, 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 a definite uh, follow-up that you have to do? And she says, no, it's completely, uh, it's not mandatory. So I said, then if it's not mandatory, go fuck yourself. Yeah, right, yeah exactly. God. Anyway, got to go. Just ran out of time. Yes. Time. Time goes by when you're having fun. Thank it you. It sure does. Well, thank you, Lawrence, for another wonderful okay. time. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, there's Larry. There goes Larry. There, there was Larry. Let me just turn my mic up here enough so that I have enough volume uh, for it. There we go. Okay, now I'm trying to... I don't know, I'm having trouble with audio lately. I'm going to have to get a new audio board, either that or I'm going to have to equalize some things out here. I don't, I don't understand any of it. Okay, anyway. So, oh, there are about five people waiting. Okay, are they all people I know? Yes, they're all people I know. Okay, so they're, uh, they're waiting in our Zoom uh let me see here there we go uh, uh here here we go let me see here who else there's one other brian neary Where, where's brian brian there you are brian whoop de whoop de bleep, bleep and do okay good how are y'all doing this evening jeff let's see your full face okay is he, Yo, fro Roy. Is he frozen i think he's frozen He's frozen. So. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Anyway. Yeah. Huh? What? Jeff? Can you hear us? Jeff, can you hear us? Kevin's frozen, too. Kevin. <laughs> yes. It says here, Jack Armand is waiting in the room. But oh, I bet, no, not again. No, I'm not going to. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to try this. Yeah, uh, it's probably the same thing as Willie Christopher. Yeah. You Jack Mehoff. Don't. Uh, J Jack Mehoff. Yeah. 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 Willie, yeah. Willie Fistergash. I have a, I'm <clears> having an itch here. Something big. Do a half hour show of just names like Herb that. Did, Herb Tinsa Big. Hmm? <laughs> that was another one. Herb Tinsa Big. Oh, Herb. <laughs> <laughs> all the same theme of porno and all the other yeah. stuff we've been talking about all week. Yeah. Just top it off with uh, sexual innuendo names. Yeah, Jack Me Off. Yeah. And other such Icon. other such porn names, right? Anyway, uh, how are you all this evening? <laughs> Hello. Uh, Josh is back with us again. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, Charlie is with us, and Brian Neary is with us, and we don't see uh, Phil here, so you can probably talk tonight, Brian. Oh, okay, okay. I know it's like he's <laughs> he, he, he uh, he's like uh, what do you call it? What was that uh, movie? Beetle. Beetlejuice. You know, you say his yeah, name I'll three his, times yeah. and it'll appear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Um, Oh, did Jack, don't, 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 don't waste your time, Jack. I'm not putting you on, Jack, so just don't waste your time. If you want to, go ahead and try. Oh, there he goes again, you know. Uh, you know, I, um, uh, 
Yeah, he he. This guy's trying way too much. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let him keep trying. Let him keep trying and wasting his time. Oh, he's back again, and he'll just stay there. Yeah. Well, you know, waste your time, Jack. Anyway, how are you all doing this evening? Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I watched the news tonight, and I told Marjorie I want to watch the news because I haven't watched the news in a couple of days. I want to have something to talk about. And then I looked at the news, and there was nothing to talk about. Except what? Except this is the uh, fifth uh, hottest, fifth day in a row of uh, the hottest days ever on planet Earth. Yep. Um, And it's and it's a cool summer so far for California. Is it really? Yeah, I mean, when I was in San Diego last like last weekend, they had some hot days, but uh, it's back like in the seventies now. So yeah. Oh, guess what happened to me today? Guess what happened to me today? I was supposed to go have that uh, that uh, CAT scan, that CT scan, right? Mm-hmm. So I call them up because I want to see. Uh, 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 I wanted to know something because I got two different things saying hey see us at this place and it's two different addresses and I wanted to see which one I was supposed to show up at so I call them and the woman goes uh, oh well uh, uh, let me see here oh yeah uh, we're gonna have to change you to another day and I said why and she said well there was a massive fire here at Mount Sinai (laughs) so they have to they changed me to Tuesday yeah, but a massive fire at Mount Sinai. So. Fire or people quit? No, no. They. What do you mean people quit? There was, there was a, it, it was a fire. It was a blaze, a conflagration. You mean it was on fire? Yes, Mount Sinai was on fire. <laughs> so they couldn't. They couldn't see anybody today. I wonder all those people who are going to go have their, that big cancer operation today. I wonder what happens to them. S O L. Go home. You said they called you. No, they didn't call me. I called them. I said, "Were you planning on calling me?" Because I was planning on coming, and they said, "Oh, we're getting around to everybody." And I said, "Well, it's about an hour before I got to leave here to go there. If I were to get there on time, so." She said, well, we can accommodate you later on today at our other campus downtown. And I went, no, nah, I don't. I, I just want to be nearby here, you know. So get this damn thing over with. You know, so. But, yeah, they didn't call. But, you know, medic, medicine, medicine's getting so bad, ridiculous uh these days and and it's just really bothering me i mean in the old days they would have called you like this fire we read about it marjorie read about it this morning or something the fire happened last night but we figured that since i didn't get a call you know i'm still on it probably was just a little part of the hospital and um uh so i mean so you know i would expect that they would call me and they didn't call me you know that's the way medicine is today. They don't give a crap. I don't know. I, I should I change hospitals? Nah. They're all just as bad, right? Nah. Well, well, is Mount Sinai oh. supposed to be pretty good, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's not like out in California where you've got Kaiser and everybody can complain about that. Do you use Kaiser, Kevin? No, no. You do, you do, Brian. Yeah, because there's a. It's not brand new, but it's newer. Mm-hmm. A newer Kaiser in Santa Clara, and it's between home and work. When I was working in Sunnyvale, yeah, so it's really convenient. But it's very nice. I mean, it's you know very nice inside and everything. So I've been going to that one. Adrian was born in that one. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I've never had a problem. They they send me any blood work. They email me and give me all the here. It should be between two and seven, and it's you're at a six or whatever. And it's very very easy to use online, and, and everything works really well. Yeah, well, I've got a thing with um, Mount Sinai. That's why I keep going to them called my my chart or my Mount Sinai or whatever it's called now. 
And, uh, you know, if I take a test like this one I'm going to take uh, on uh, Tuesday, as soon as they post it, it winds up on my page. You know, it winds up on my account, and I can see the results of it probably before my doctor even gets it, you know. So, but, you know, I mean, I just, I, when, come on, you can call me, can't you? You know, I mean, you're, I mean, you're going to do some radiation. I mean, you're going to send a bill to Medicare for like seven, eight hundred bucks. So, come on. Got a dime? Put it in a mm -hmm. slot and call me. <laughs> so, anyway. And my jaw's killing me tonight. Hold on a second. I'm going to take some ibuprofen here. Okay. Anyway, so uh, anybody have anything they want to talk about? How about you, Josh? Well... I didn't watch the news today, so I don't know if anything happened. But I did complain to these guys all weekend that I read two articles, opinion pieces, in the Washington Post. Yeah. Saying that the next Indiana Jones movie that gets made or rebooted, that Indiana Jones should be played by a woman. And we talked about this last Saturday that they are coming for everything that us middle-aged white men hold dear. And I'm not giving hey, up my fucking Indiana Jones. So, they can suck it. Well, I, I you know, I, I they, okay. There are masculine roles, okay? I'm sorry, there are masculine roles. And Indiana Jones is an adventurer, an archeologist, and you know, he goes and fights people and things like that. And that's not the kind of role women play. You know, yes. But, but we're back to the Biden thing. You know, Biden put the pressure on, you know, having a vice president woman, uh, black, you know, African-American and, and, and goes and says that. Just do it. Don't say like, oh, now we're going to we want to have Indiana Jones. We're going to find a woman to play this part. Just do it. Don't don't like make it on purpose to do that. Say, hey, Halle Berry is asking about this and we think she'd be great for the role and just do it but when they start saying oh we have we're doing this now we're we're gonna have a woman it's like like josh is sort of saying you know it's, it's like why just if you think that's the person for the role the best person for the role fill it but don't i mean i mean are they going to for instance are they going to have a female james bond and will no, the sure. re will the remake of goldfinger have a character named penis galore Somebody just stole that, and that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody yeah. probably will do it. Well, just remember this date, so if that happens, you can sue them and tell them they took your idea. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. It, I just, would you go to a movie where Indiana Jones was played by a woman? If it's Halle Berry, Charlie and I are going. Oh, well, hell yeah. <laughs> well, that's a different story. <laughs> you know doesn't have to be Indiana Jones. It could be anything with Halle Berry. Yep. And by the way, for an old broad, and she's in her 50s now, she's holding yep. up real good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but... my overall point is, and it doesn't matter, middle-aged white man, black man, Hispanic man, it doesn't matter. My point is that, like, you can't enjoy anything anymore without <laughs> someone trying to make you feel bad about the fact that you enjoy it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry that I like movies where Chris Hemsworth beats people up. I, I'm so you know, like, I'm allowed to like that kind of movie. And you don't make me feel bad about it. If you like some other kind of movie, what I would recommend is that in the privacy of your own home, you watch that movie and then leave me the fuck alone. Well, what they should do is, and they've done it lately, uh, they should have adventure films with female leads, but you don't have to take one that already exists like Indiana Jones and say, use a woman, or uh, James Bond, or use a woman. Come up with some kind of new character that has a female. Yes, Patrick? Wasn't Lara Croft like that? Yeah, Lara Croft was kind of a uh, Indiana Jones, yeah. She was an archeologist. And by the way, all th the three versions of that movie uh, of Lara Croft, the three Lara Croft films yep. failed miserably at the box office. So, but if you said Lara Croft can be played by a man next time, I would object wholeheartedly. They, I, they would. I want her played by Halle Berry. You know. Yeah. 
I'm just, I don't know, I'm just saying, I, I read the first one and it was like, I rolled my eyes, and then like two days later there was another one complaining about the same thing, that uh, these movies are not doing anything to make young girls feel like they can grow up to be archaeologists, and I'm like, like, that's... Steven Spielberg's fault now or something? Well, or if you want to argue, if you want, if you, if you want to make an argument that in the in the in the Indiana Jones pictures there were no positive female roles, okay, uh, I would agree with you at least on the first uh, couple of them. You know, uh, uh, the the one that I hated, and I think every woman would hate, is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, where you've got this woman who's basically her main line in the film constantly is, I think I broke a nail, you know, and that's not the way to portray a female in, in these films, you know, uh, and, and she's complaining and she's screaming and she's, you know, and she's always, of course, breaking nails. Yes, uh, Patrick? Well, that was a product of a time as well from the 80s. I mean, we, we keep going back and criticizing films and cartoons and TV shows that were made 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, 90 years ago. Yeah. Saying, well, this Don't go back crazy. too far, otherwise they're silent and nobody well, understands. I, yeah. and, but even silent films. I mean, you know, this is oh, racist, oh. this is sexist, this is homophobic. Oh, listen, you know, I, I got to tell That was the time. I got to And if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Silent films, The do you know who the great preponderance of directors were in silent films? German. Women. Oh, well. Oh. Women. Women were the major screenwriters of the time. And when sound came in, because they did write silent films, of course, uh, when sound came in, all of a sudden, all the female directors were out the door. All the female writers were out the door, and they didn't reemerge until years later. Oh, look, we have a... Uh, is that a witch with uh, green hair? <laughs> Hello, Adrian. How are you? It's teal hair. Is it teal? <laughs> well, it, well, it was a different color, wasn't it? It was blue at one point, wasn't it? It was blue, it started with blue, then it was a blonde, and now she just dyed it again, so. Yeah, okay. Okay, let, let me take care of this thing. So did I. Yeah, yeah, I notice, <laughs> I notice. Uh, so anyway, you know, the, the point is, is that, that uh, uh, great, you know, you want more women in films being adventurers and things like that, create new characters for a female character. And, you know, I don't want Lara Croft to be played by a guy, but we better start arguing for that. But, I mean, even yeah. no matter what anybody wants, like, don't make me feel bad for what I like. No one is stopping anyone from making those movies yeah. except the marketplace. I mean, I guarantee you if someone thought they could cast Jennifer Lawrence as the new Indiana Jones and make a gazillion dollars, they would do it. Yeah. <laughs> because money is what people wanted and, and do you know how the film would, you know how the film would do terribly no nobody wants to in fact the current indiana jones film isn't doing that well because he's an old guy in this film well, you know I mean, it's just but I, I mean it's just like i'm sorry that i like stereotypical middle-aged men stuff you know i mean i like tom clancy novels i always did yeah i, I like my hunt for the red october I like my clear and present danger. I mean, leave me alone. <laughs> just yeah, let me enjoy my you're stuff. You're allowed to like what you're allowed to like. Yeah. It's like it's like the girls are trying to steal stuff from us. They, they try to get it all. The girls want to, you know. Well, I'm just, you know, it's, I, you don't have to feel guilty because you like something that there's there's nothing wrong with. It's just a different taste than what someone else might prefer. Well, the worst part is you're being made to feel guilty about this. You know? Well, we don't have... Uh, Indiana Jones should be played by a woman next time. Well, there is no next time. That's the last Indiana Jones movie. Well, James Bond should be... They've actually been talking about James Bond being played by a woman. And I'm going, you can't do that. 
You know, you just can't do that. Uh, unless maybe James Bond is a trans now or something like that, you know. I mean, I'm surprised that it's not <laughs> yet, you know. But, but in the last James Bond, there was they, they did make uh, that lady uh, uh, 007. And that the, the yeah, they had Bond, a 007. Yeah, now, you could, do, black lady. You, you could do a female 007, okay? Uh, and and th there was a female 007 in the last uh, James Bond film. Right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Because, and she was black. And if she was gay, I mean, that's like the trifecta. Well, I don't think they established her as gay. But I'm sure the gay community will complain about that. You know. Thanks. <laughs> you know. Just, I mean. Yeah, and I just I just found the article. Yeah, and, and they, say, they say that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the word on the street is her character will take over the mantle for Indiana Jones. Might get replaced by a female. Yeah, but the, if you do that, that's Laura Croft. That's all you. It is. Can yeah. I just add something? Sure. A, a representative of the disabled people. Oh, oh you want a disabled world? Indiana Jones? I want a James Bond in a wheelchair going on these adventures. But not a motorized one, one like I have, where he's got to push, mm -hmm. and I want to see him pushing across the desert or trying to escape. Well, let, well hold on airplane. a second, Patrick. If you wait long enough and they do another James Bond movie with Harrison Ford, you may get your wish. <laughs> <laughs> He's in his 80s. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, we, we got to have representatives of everything, so let's have the cripples out there, too. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, and and realistically crippled. So, you know, um, have somebody with with a bad heart that got to jump out of an airplane and has a heart attack on the way down and is dead by the time they hit the ground. But it was representative of that community. And then you could have blind and, and deaf and, like I said, crippled like me. And, I mean... Let's just get the whole... All, all I'm saying every... is write a new series of characters, you know? If you want to make them women, you want to make them uh, uh, crippled, whatever you want to make them. I it, could see but, Patrick going with the wheelchair when the big yeah. boulder's coming after him. But if they say, yeah, but if they say they're going to make Indiana Jones a woman, that's already been done. Right. You well, know. But, but I'm just... But no one is stopping anyone from making anything that I'm... A, I mean, there's not... Laws yeah, but what you're saying, food don't food don't take food. don't take our iconic manly things and try yes. and destroy them. Because yes, because you feel like something else is underrepresented, then go make what you want. There's, but it's still driven by the marketplace. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you that if they thought they could make a certain type of character or movie and it would make a lot of money, I think that they would do it. I don't see Lionsgate, for example, saying. Well, we could make a billion dollars, but we'd have to cast a black woman. We're not going to do that. We're not going to make any money because we don't like black women. Give me a fucking break. They would be like, go give me a black what, woman and what? make me a billion dollars. Wait a minute. If it, back, if it go was, give me two. If it was Halle Berry, it'd be fine. You know. But <laughs> you know, how many Halle Berries are there in this world? And how many Oprahs are there? <laughs> you know, so, I mean, come on. Yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, you know, I don't remember a big controversy when they made M Judy Dench or Judy Dench started playing M. That went fine. I don't remember anybody complaining that, at all. That was a, that seemed like a very easy fit because M could yeah. be a female. M was whoever was the head of that division. Yeah, you yeah. know. But I think it goes back to just doing it, right? They just did it. They didn't like yeah. make a big announcement. Oh, we're gonna make a woman this time, and exactly. like Josh is saying, to gain more people, it's just. By the way, Bernard Lee, who played M in the original James Bond movies, I didn't know this. He was a major alcoholic. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought I'd mention that this little historical perspective here. Because they were be doing a lot of equality there. They were allowing drunks to play uh, the heads of, uh, of uh, divisions in the Secret Service. So that was good. Probably accurate now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I think that, you know, m movie companies or whatever make movies that they think will produce 
profits. You if, know? They, if they make money, they'll do, they'll do hundreds of them. And other people will follow. They'll do all the imitations of that thing that you're doing. I, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is I, I think well, we talked like two weeks ago or whatever that I told you I had read an article like maybe a year ago or whatever that said that ex when they made uh, Extraction on Netflix that it was their highest streamed movie ever. So, of course, they made a second Extraction. And now they want to make a third. Why? Because the second one was streamed by a lot of people. I'm sorry that yeah, the guy that yeah. played in the movie is white. You know, I mean, give me a. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, 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 Hunger Games. You had Jennifer Lawrence playing yes. an action hero. You know, I, I yeah, want to remake all the. Money, I, I, well, I want to remake all the uh, all the Hunger Games movies with a guy. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I want I want an equal representation. And, you know, the next time they make a movie about a runaway slave, I want Jessica Chastain to be their runaway slave because she's a really good actor. Well, yeah, because why that. should why should a black woman get that role? Just yeah. Be, yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree with aggravating. you. Aggravating. I think if they do the Harriet Tubman story, it should be starring, uh, oh, I don't know, Jennifer Lawrence. Scarlett Johansson. Why Scarlett not? Johansson, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as Harriet Tubman. Well, we can't do that. Harriet Tubman was black. No crap. <laughs> you know, come on. Of course. Of course she was. <laughs> Actually, could it be played by a male? That's a, a ma male? A white male playing Harriet Tubman. Yeah, I, I think that would be that would be best. I got to say something about Harriet Tubman for a second. And I, I don't miss in any disrespect for who I consider one of the major iconic black women in history okay um, so please don't take this wrong but on Frederick Douglass Boulevard up here uh, let's see if this is actually Ray uh, let's see here is it Ray um, I'm getting ready to well he's not coming in fast and oh there he is okay uh, the, up on Frederick Douglass Boulevard here uh, at a certain intersection uh, there's a kind of a little island and on that island they have placed a statue of Harriet Tubman which is you know it's great I pointed out to you hey that's Harriet Tubman but you know what it looks like to me every time I look at it it looks like Mrs. Butterworth <laughs> it's just shaped like it's a bottle of Mrs. Butterworth you know so anyway um, I, I, you know, I, I just think that we're getting it. You know, the trouble is that the people who are complaining the most aren't the racial groups or the sexual groups that uh, are being affected by this. It's usually white people, straight white people, who are saying it's not proper that we don't have a female James Bond or Indiana Jones. You know, and I, I think it's stupid. I think it's just stupid. You know. <laughs> Of course, she'd have to be a lesbian if she were James Bond, because then she'd come <clears throat> still be able to come on to the same women. So they would leave that part of it, but they probably wouldn't. You know, it's 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 not uh, not wonderful. But anyway, so how are you all tonight? Otherwise, <laughs> uh, did you hear about the what's the latest thing that the president of the United States uh, cannot uh, by a uh, court ruled? That they cannot. Um, uh, uh, what, what what was the actual ruling? That they can't uh, ask for the social media groups to censor certain things, because the president would send out a letter to say Facebook saying, you know, there's a there are quotes about this or that or the other thing. It's not true. Mm -hmm. It's not factual. Take that off. And the court said the president can't do that. How do you feel about that, Josh, being our little legal scholar? Are you familiar with this thing? No, not really. Um, I was, like, totally offline today. So was that something from today, you're saying? The, the last couple of days, yeah. Yes. I, I must not have. I mean, I might I thought have. thought that was already a rule. A little something no, about that. No, no, but no. But the, the, the president can't be in contact with these social media platforms telling them that they have to watch out for this or that because it can't be proven and you know it's not factual and so on um, yeah because I wondered how people felt about that 
I didn't realize the president could do that. You know, wouldn't that fly in the face of freedom of speech? Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't seem like a like an authority that you know that the executive would hold. Um, so I'm not really sure what 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 came about. I mean, you know, the only sort of you know, I think there are some federal laws that might give some gag order, temporary things like that to the executive in the case of like, you know, extreme national security or whatever. Almost like the police get certain liberties during a mm -hmm. hot pursuit or whatever, you know, but, you know, they might have some sort of power there, you know, temporarily, of course, you know, not, not like a permanent injunction or anything, but, you know, because it could endanger someone or many people, you know, within, you know, the next few hours or something, but as far sounds, as... What sounds like saying, a piece of the you know, wild, wild west internet that the uh, previous president exposed and they're just covering it. Well, uh, the previous, pre this is uh, the guy, the judge who made this decision is a Trump appointee. Yeah, well, it really doesn't matter. I mean, if you did the right thing, then you did the right thing because when that was going on, that's what he was doing, right? Yeah. So. And then he said that the 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 administration, the powers that be in the administration, cannot get a hold of these social media organizations and say, right. "Don't publish stuff like that." Yeah, don't tell them to do this and don't tell them to do that. It's not their business. It's their business to police themselves. Yeah. Did any president ever do that? I don't remember any president. Supposedly, ever doing that. Biden did. That's why it was made an issue of. But Trump did it as well in a, in a different way. Yeah. So what they're doing is trying to get a get a foothold of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, there was no me, rule about it, so there doesn't seem to me rule. like a like an authority that they would hold. I, mean, I don't think it should you know, be. Yeah, it's nothing they should hold. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, other than some sort of like, you know, national security type of deal for. Of, of, you know, I mean, these would be very limited in both scope and term, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. But, I mean, as far as, you know, you can't publish this because it's giving misleading information about, you know, mm -hmm. COVID or whatever. I mean, I don't really know that, you know, the executive has the authority to decide that, you know. Uh, well, supposedly yeah. Biden was uh, the Biden administration was getting a hold of these like Facebook and so on and saying we don't like that that should be taken off. You know, yeah, it's well, not true. Well, it's not true. Take it off. And, I mean, and, I, I don't know if that just means they were just asking, you know, because I mean, there's a difference between asking and a, uh, you know. Uh, well, I mean, what could what cease could, and desist? Ordering, or, yeah. You know, yeah, well, I yeah, but cease and desist is a legal you know? framework. Well, right, yeah. but I, I'm just saying, you know, like that's, I, I mean, you know, asking and, you know, basically ordering, I think are, you know, different. I mm -hmm. mean, so I'm not really sure. I mean, that's some Nixon esque type stuff there. Well, <laughs> I'm not really sure. Hello, Ray. You know. Hello, mm -hmm. Ray. I mean, I have to see. Do you know the case? Hi, hi, hi. I just want to make sure you're okay there. Oh yeah. Oh, I. Re I just was thinking. Uh, I wonder if Trump could make the argument when he. Uh, you're, you're breaking up on you guys for votes. You're breaking up on us. Where are you? When when. I'm in the garage. Oh, you can't hear me. No, you keep well, you breaking break up. Is that, is that better? You keep breaking up. Okay, forget it then. I don't know what's wrong. I'll stop. No, no, you're you're okay now. Oh, I, I oh, it must have been the other noise. Yeah, I was um, I was just thinking that Trump could make the argument. Well, when I called and asked for those votes, I was just asking. I wasn't any ordering anyone to give me <laughs> more votes. Couldn't he make that argument then? Yeah, that wasn't nothing to do with the internet. Yeah, no, no I know. Idiot. I'm just saying. It's a would it be a similar situation? You know, no. He didn't order them to do it. No, I. I well, he okay. could, he could use it as his defense that it wasn't his fault because he's a douchebag. Okay. <laughs> you know, well, I just, and and we would agree with him. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, do you know the case or anything? I mean, I could definitely. I don't. Check. I don't know uh, who brought it. I'm trying to remember now. I, I, I vaguely, in listening to it out of the side of my head, uh, uh, saw who it was. I think it was some, somebody. In, I, I seem to think Florida, but I'll, I'd, I'll have to look it up. Or somebody is there with a computer and can look it up. Look it up, and we can find out where. Where yeah, I don't know. I'll, came I mean, from. I'll definitely look around because I, I mean, maybe I don't know. Last mm -hmm. two or three days, I almost kind of totally disconnected because, I, like I said, I read the second article about the Indiana Jones thing, and then at the same day, there was like five more opinion articles about how we need to expand the court because of all the things they're doing that are just so bad and I just told these guys I was like I'm fucking done reading the newspaper for a couple days. Yeah, are you you're Nerves. not you're not for expanding the court, are you? Well, no, what difference? I mean, you don't need to expand the court. Just change the laws that you don't like that they're doing. I mean, there's already a way to do I mean, if there's 9 or there's 25, what difference does it make if the, it's you're still allowed to change anything that they did. You can change through the other 12 mechanisms that you have available to change. So what difference would, you know, what difference does that make? Do you just want to make it bigger and more powerful than it already is? I'm, okay, then put more people on it. Go ahead. That's fine. Then just give the politicians something else to argue about, uh, you know, the other days of the year that they're not already doing it. I mean, now instead of arguing over a justice every two or three years, Let's put 25 on there so they can argue it over every 90 days. That's fine. Um, that'll do a lot of good, right? I mean, yeah. what, what, what can, can, can Biden add uh, judges to the court without Congress? No. So no, they would have to, it would take a, it would take a, a legislation to expand the, the number uh, to begin with. So, I mean, the chances of it happening would be slim, but I'm, but that's what I'm saying is, What's the difference between nine and fifteen, other than the obvious answer of six? You know, what's what's the difference politically, or I'm uh, not politically. What's what's the difference process-wise, or practically? I mean, what what would it change? I mean, if you took the number from nine to fifteen, and 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 six of them got appointed by Biden today for the for the next couple of years, maybe you would get everything that you wanted. And then ten years from now, what 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 what's the difference then? Uh, you know, I mean, it goes right back to the way that it was. So then you take it from fifteen more. to twenty-one. Next thing you know, there's thirty right? of them. And then let's make it twenty-nine. Or what? I mean, but I'm just saying, anything that they, that's been done in the last whatever. I mean, uh, they 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 threw out affirmative action completely. Wor worst thing ever. America is ruined. It's circling the drain. <laughs> Okay, well then have the 535 members of Congress pass laws uh, or like they're supposed action. to. And then after they pass the law, the president will sign it, and there you go, you're all done. Well, anything that a Democrat wants, the Republicans are going to fight, and anything that the Republicans want, the Democrats are going to fight. And basically what we're in in this country is in a stalemate in which nothing's going to get done, so God help us all. You know? I mean... Well, the things Republicans want done get done. Well... Pro v. Wade. Well, yeah, but that's because we got a court that is, you know, a bunch of... Well, you know, I mean, there's a question as to whether that court is legal or not. I mean, they're, they're doing some pretty terrible things now. Between Clarence Thomas and who are I think two others have been now found who have yeah. have done things which, you know, are not against the law, but they're certainly not ethical, you know. And um, uh, uh, I think the court has lost the respect of the American people. There's no question about that. Yeah, probably right. So, so that's I guess that's my point. Then, so you want to you so you want to make something that you you think is not well run bigger you know i mean I'm, I'm just saying if you worked at a private company right now and you said oh my god you know the fucking maintenance department is a is a clown show you know mm -hmm. let's make it bigger what the bigger clown show. <laughs> you know, I mean, okay only half a circus you know? make it a full circus i mean let's let's spend more money down there okay well no i get what you're saying i mean right now in, in the short term we would want to do it so that maybe the court would do be doing 
voting for things our way, okay? Mm -hmm. But then down the road, all of a sudden you've come up, you've got a, you've got a 15 person Supreme Court and they've all been set up by the Republicans, you know? So yeah, it's it, it, it just, you're right, it should be stay the way it is. Yes, Patrick. I mean, yeah. Wait, it, the, it relates to what we're talking about, but it's a, it's a different situation. Mm -hmm. In Wisconsin, the governor uh, appoints certain uh, position within the state government. Mm -hmm. And those positions um, originally are through being elected. Mm -hmm. When the term runs out the gov or the person quits, the governor can appoint somebody until another election is held. Mm -hmm. But the Republicans, a couple of years ago, changed it so that it is not a requirement to nominate somebody for that position. Mm -hmm. And then that person that is done with the position or was um, um, voted out, but there is nobody to replace them, they could stay in the position for as long as the legislation uh, legislator do not bring it to a vote. Well, that was fine when the Republicans were doing it. Now they're in a situation where there's a Democrat in that position, and that Democrat mm -hmm. will not leave. So it 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 you got to be careful what you wish for, and it. Just like Josh was saying, you want 21 members of the court? Great. So Biden and let's say a Democrat gets elected again, if it's Biden or somebody else, <laughs> off the court and you can have it to the left. And then in eight, 12 years, whatever, a Republican comes in, then it's going to pack it that way. I mean, well, I mean, the other the other question here is that uh, let's say he adds another three judges arbitrarily to the Supreme Court. Uh, he's then got to get those Supreme Court judges approved, and the Republicans are going to do everything they can to stalemate that forever. You know, until they get into office and they can put their three in. You know. Yeah. But then, then we'll just sit around and complain about all these unconscionable seven to six decisions. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, if you think that the Dobbs ruling was, you know, cray cray or whatever, perfectly fine. But our Congress has the power to rectify that. Like right now. Oh, they our, could, they our, could our, go down. There. They could go tonight at eleven forty-two p.m. if they want and get together and fix the problem right now. Yeah, but but the Republicans are not going to make that a possibility. Nope. You know, but I mean, that's not. I but, mean, it's like and I know it's, I say it, this for, all the time, and everyone gets tired of hearing it. But with what you just said is right. But how is that? Well, the John governor, Robert. the governor of California, is proposing <laughs> is proposing a twenty eighth amendment to change the rules about gun guns and, and gun rights, mm -hmm. and uh, I sent him fifty bucks just you know because I felt guilty and wanted to help you know, mm -hmm. but I don't think he's ever going to have a chance of getting that passed because he's got to get it through Congress. You you know yeah. plus if you're going to do an amendment that takes a lot. What what do you have to do to get an amendment? You have to have so many states ratify it. No, I need three quarters. Yeah, yeah I mean you'll you never need, get that done. Need, yeah, you need two thirds of both houses of Congress and three quarters of the states. Yeah, you know so it is possible. It's been done twenty seven times. Been done twenty seven times. You know, it's just not. It was possible back then because you had people that were willing to work with each other. You mm -hmm. don't have that any longer. I don't right. think they could get another amendment to the Constitution passed if they tried. I, I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying that I disagree. I just keep saying, and I know everyone gets tired of it, but I just keep saying, you're right. But how is any of that Chief Justice John Roberts' fault? Oh, it's not John there Roberts' There you fault. go. That's my point. And even if you hate him and you can't stand his guts, how is that Justice Samuel Alito's fault? Uh, how is that Brett Kavanaugh's fault? I think it's their fault because 
Uh, because, it, wow. and correct me if I'm wrong, is not the uh, Supreme Court, is not their place to rule on constitutional issues by interpreting the Constitution. Am I right about that? I mean, that's their general... Uh, their, their, their job isn't to make laws, their job isn't to uh, say, oh, well, you committed this murder and you didn't commit this murder or whatever. That's not what they do. What they do is people bring cases before them and they adjudicate them based upon uh, the, uh, uh, the, the credibility of it as per the Constitution. That's the general function. Okay. Yeah. Are they doing that? Or are they voting? They their, are are they are, they are they are they voting their own conscience? What they say. But, but or are they voting their own conscience? You know, and not well, voting they, based upon the con interpretation of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Well, I think they are. They just have a different interpretation than you do. Oh God! Well, I do. well then we're in. Or all, anyone else does. We're, we're all in trouble. <laughs> We're in deep doo doo. We all have different opinion. I bet, I bet you could ask the same question to every person on this panel, mm -hmm. and it'd be differing opinions in small areas. Even if it's overall everybody agrees, there's still going to be. Well, I agree with you, except I would change this, and I agree with you, except I would change this, and I agree with him because, but I would change this. I mean interpretation and opinion is exactly that yeah, but the but, point but, is that we we asked them to do that we asked them to do it that we were given a a large and enormously powerful in fact it could be argued the most powerful branch of our three system government that was meant to adjudicate and solved all these problems and those people with our approval asked that other branch to take care of it for them we all went to solomon and asked him what to do with our baby and when he said split it we whined like little bitches when that was his answer and we went and asked we asked they didn't they didn't ask us to give it to mm -hmm. them we asked them to take it I mean, that's, that's, I mean, we, we gave it to them. We handed it to them and said, this is your problem because we don't want to deal with it. And then we didn't like their wisdom because we didn't see it as wisdom. But we asked them. They didn't, I mean, they don't snatch any of these cases out. They didn't, I mean, they don't go snatch a case away anywhere. Please don't and, say snatch. Say, I might get demonetized. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know that we we want that case because we want to make you know law we want to flex our muscle or, or what I mean they you know mm -hmm. people literally stand in line and, you know, for uh, look, years yeah, look, on another subject that, on another subject entirely Ray how long have you been on that bike at this time uh, oh I'm 45 minutes 45 minutes okay do you feel any better healthier or anything else I do, yeah. Oh. I've been having like severe fatigue and stuff. I don't even know why. I'm going to the doctor next week. Did, did, did you did you get uh, did you have uh, uh, COVID at all? Uh, back in back in October, it, September, right? In October, might, might be I did. long haul. Might be long haul. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, I, I have long. Haul. I had terrible uh, insomnia for four months after I had it. Maybe I still have long COVID. Yeah, yeah. that could very well be. You know. Not yeah. uncommon. Because it's no explanation. I can't figure yeah. it out. Yeah. No, excuse me. I just want to do... It's look, incredible. It, like, I'm just dragging all day. I wanted to drag Ray into this kicking and screaming, or pedaling, as it were. Um, well, you know, so, I mean, I guess that's just my point. I'm just saying if you... Yeah. You can all look back down and say, well, I can't yeah. believe that a Supreme Court ever said... You know that uh, putting Japanese people in an internment camp was constitutional, yeah. but I bet you know. Well, I don't bet the evidence is there. But if you went back to, you know, 1942 and took a poll, the American public would have said, "How, well, how, how, how do we constitutional?" We can't. You know? We can't assure the court seems to 
change their mind. Let me put it this way. You have a decision one way. We talked about it last night. The, mm -hmm. the ruling in about 1936 by the Supreme Court regarding the Second Amendment was that it was a cumulative right, not an individual right. And yet mm -hmm. somewhere along the line, that's, that's been changed and I think probably overturned by another decision by the Supreme Court. Shouldn't it be that once the Supreme Court makes up its mind about something that it becomes precedent and that it remains that way and that you can't change it? It, it generally does, except in certain high-profile mm -hmm. situations. And, you know, I would argue uh, personally that if you're right on the date, you know, 1936, and then, you know, uh, the next huge gun case, I think, was probably the Heller decision, and I don't remember the date of that. Mm -hmm. Let's just call it 19, you know, 96. My counter argument would be that you didn't like the Heller decision, and my argument would be okay. But in that 60-year mm -hmm. period, in between the two, mm, no one did a damn thing about it. Yeah, it yeah. was obviously a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a problem by our own admission because we took it to the highest court in the land. Mm -hmm. And generally, my understanding is that no one goes to the Supreme Court unless they have a problem. I mean, no one says, I'm having a perfectly normal day. I'd like to go ask the Supreme Court about it. They say, mm -hmm. I have a problem that I need to fix them. I'll go ask the court. So we had a problem, and no one did anything about it for 60 years. And then they, I mean, I just keep saying that you just. Let me you ask you this. power to people and then complaining that they have power. You know, we think of the Supreme Court, at least as I was growing up, the Supreme Court is this end-all and be-all of honesty and uh, decency and so on. But there have been Supreme Courts that have been not considered so nice and so good and so honest. Am I right? Sure. It's an imperfect, you know, union. I mean, you know, America has had problems like all other countries and like all over all other nation states in the history of the world and like people and that's because nations and and courts are made up of people and you know people are not always you know reliable or respectable i mean you yeah. know so that's, but we but the problem the, the problem is that we give that these people power for the rest of their lives yeah, well, They've got a cush job for the rest of their lives. Maybe we should limit that. Maybe I mean, that's a, maybe a fifteen that's an option. year. It's open to us. We're allowed to do it. A you fifteen know, year don't. a fifteen year term would be. I would prefer a shorter term for the court justices over expanding the number of justices there are. Mm -hmm. Would that not be a better idea? Um, I don't. I don't like limit, limiting them to terms personally because I think it'll just create political upheaval all the time, and I think it will make the the. the well, court, when they drop dead, that's political upheaval, okay. you know. Yeah. Right, but it it makes it more rare. I think the circus that you see surrounding it, I think you would just see more frequently. Just like it, I think it would be the same as if you expanded the number. I think it would just be yeah. the same. Yeah, I think. You know, this presidential election that was coming up, everyone would be saying, oh, and then that, in that four-year term, there's three justices who are going to get termed out, and that's what it would all be about. Yeah. And those three things, those three times, would consume the entire four years of government, mm -hmm. in my opinion, rather than things that should be consumed by government, which is, you know, our budget and our and our our programs to help people and defense and you know things like that i think all that would become a sideshow to the court the court the court because everyone looks at the court as the mechanism of government to fix their problem well how do you think how do you rather th than the legislature let me ask you this and, and, rehash everything too every time every time you yeah. be reelected. You know? let me let me ask you this how do you think the supreme court would rule on indiana jones being played by a woman <laughs> i think this one would agree with me <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, yeah. I just wanted to bring it back to where we began. It was kind of like the circle of life, you know. Um, you got, you know, I, I, next time I watch, you know, 
the last kingdom or something like that i'll hit myself with a belt or whatever you know yeah 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 um yeah, no, you know, you like brought up you, by combat, you, know? you know, he brought up uh, one thing earlier, and I think it's an important thing to remember because it, it's true, especially with movies. That movies were made for a time and to the sensibilities of that time, and we should not go back retroactively and try and censor them, or stop showing them, because I mean, like Gone with the Wind is a totally inappropriate movie by today's standards, and yet. It's part of motion picture history, you know. I mean, Charlie, being it's of the black classic. persuasion, would you want to see uh, Gone with the Wind just not shown anymore? No, I wouldn't want that at all. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, you know, it, 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 it's uh, what we call the zeitgeist, the tempo of the times, and films are, are definitely zeitgeist. Uh, the way women, I see women portrayed in films and some of those early movies and you know, hey doll, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. uh, it, 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 you know, I, I could, I would not want to see a single hair on the head of those movies changed, because our sensibilities today are different, you know. Yeah, I mean, you have, I mean, like my grandfather is Italian, and he, he called certain people by certain names, and yeah. you know, it, it's. It's not like I hate him for it. I don't agree with how he called Asian people and some other people. It's like, that's just, you know, it, that's how he was. But it's not like he was a bad person. It was just that those, those times, you know. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, there was a time when I was growing up where I'd refer to a woman as a girl. And none of them would mind that, by the way. But then as time went on, I, people said, no, you should call them women. And so now whenever I hear somebody refer to somebody as a girl, even if it's an old video or something like that, I'm, I'm kind of put off by that. But, you know, I changed as times changed. And that's all we should do is just change with the times. And also, all of this is a question of respecting people. You know, and if you have a respect for women, you don't call a woman a girl. You know, because she's not a girl. But man, when I was younger, uh, all any woman, she could be 30, was a girl. Mm -hmm. you know, so. She'd be 60. She could be 60, <laughs> she'd be a girl. Well, at 60, they didn't mind being called a girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Like a broad. Girl. How, how did broad come up? I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something about the term broad. My father said he loved the term. Really? He said, yeah, because he, to him, the word broad referred to a woman who was in charge, you know? And 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 uh, he referred to, he said one of the great broads was Betty Davis, was a great broad, you know? And, and so I was always taught that broad was kind of a positive term because it meant that a woman was, you know, took, took matters into her own hands. She didn't take crap from anybody, you know? Uh, but, and I don't know where the term came from. Uh, Maybe because they're broad in the girth or something. I don't know. I broad no, hips. Broad hips. You think that was it? Yeah. Um, but yeah. you know this. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying that this whining about stuff like this is, and I tell Patrick and Kevin this all the time because I I get it. This this shit is how Trump got elected, and this is how he will get elected again. Again. If yeah. you keep yeah. up yeah. with this bullshit, because. I don't agree with it, but I I speak the language of people that voted for him, and I know yeah. exactly when he said shit. I knew what he was talking about. Wait a minute, he, you speak their language? You mean blatant gibberish? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I just wonder. Hey, listen, the speak theme is infinity. the theme is playing, uh, and that means that it's almost time to go here. I thank Jeff for being here tonight. Jeff, you've been rather quiet this evening, but that's okay. You know. There thank you. There are those evenings, and then there are those evenings where you're chatty. Uh, yep. uh, um, um, Kevin, great to have you here. Josh, a pleasure. Charlie, of course, a pleasure. Yes, okay, Adrian, we see you. Okay, yeah. Oh, boy. She's adorable. But I'm, I didn't say that. I don't want to spoil her. Look, look, not, oh, when I said she's adorable, she was giving, doing an adorable. Give me, Adrian, before we go, give me an adorable look. Oh, jeez. <laughs>
That one. Uh, like, That's good. She's like a she's like a cat. She won't do what you want her to do when it's time to do it. Anyway, good night, Adrian. Good night, uh, <laughs> Brian. Good seeing you. Good night to Patrick and Ray. Good having you here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There will be another citizen panel uh, coming right up with uh, Jack Bishop. You can call him on Skype at GabNet Live. GabNet Live is the Skype address uh, to call Jack Bishop. I'll see you again on Monday with the uh, pop-up show. That will be uh, broadcast live on Facebook. And also, uh, we'll be right here doing it. And then we'll be again, we'll be back here on uh, Wednesday at uh, 1030. Same time, same station in life. Have a nice weekend, everybody. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night. <laughs>